Uh, my name is George Haley, and uh, I'd like to share a story about a trip that I took with uh, some of our workers that uh, taught me something. Uh, <clears throat> we, our school, uh, Korean Union College, is uh, sort of right on the edge of Seoul. And uh, this particular time, we, the three other uh, staff workers, uh, Korean fellows, uh, folks, well, the man and his wife and a couple other men, and we were going over to the East Coast, which is about 100, 120 mile drive. So in the, on the roads in those days, it was probably about a 10 hour uh, ride. And uh, we drove over there and got over there and looked at the school and the property and uh, visited the folks that we wanted to see. And then when we got ready to come back, we left there real early in the morning because we wanted to get back to Seoul before too late. Like I say, it was about a 10 hour drive. So we got up and we left there about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. It was still dark. And the man in the house said, uh, now, you, you, when you take this road that you're on right here in front of our house, and it's going to, uh, there's going to be a fork in the road. It'll divide. And when you get there, you take the, the uh, left-hand fork. And uh, that'll, that'll be a good road, and then you can get out to the main road. So we got down there, and we came to this fork in the road. And Well, actually, when we looked at it, the three of us, we thought uh, the right-hand one looks much better than the left-hand one. So um, we took the right-hand one. And about 100 yards down the road, there was a uh, small tree that had fallen across in front of the road. And so one of the men got out and he moved the tree out of the way so we could continue going. And about another 100 yards down the road, we saw why the tree was there. It hadn't just fallen there. Somebody put it there. And we weren't supposed to go down that road. <clears throat> so one of the men got out. And I had a big flashlight and he walked in front of the, uh, we had a Land Rover then. And this was a logging uh, road. So these big trucks made huge ruts on each side where the wheels went. And this little Land Rover, I was tipped to the side, kind of like at about a 10 or 15 degree angle with one wheel down in the big tr truck rut. And on the right hand side was the cliff going up the mountainside. And on the other side, we don't know what was down there, but it was a big deep ravine, probably 100 or 200 feet. So I hugged the side next to the mountain and we slowly made our way down this road and finally it came out to where this other fork joined it and we were back on the main road so it was fine but we learned we should have paid attention to the man that knew his way around there the man who lived there and uh, we thought my we, we better pay attention now so anyway we went on a ways and uh, <clears throat> we got to a small village and got some gas. And uh, while we were sitting there getting filling up with fuel, uh, a Korean GI came up to us and he saw our license plate and he said, are you guys going to Seoul? Uh, could, could I ride with you? And we said, well, yeah, that's what we have room. So he said, it'll take me about 10 minutes to get permission from my captain. So can you wait for me? So he ran off. And we said, yeah. And we waited a while, and he didn't come, and he didn't come. And so we were anxious, and so we left. And uh, we came to a little spot where there was the road divided. And uh, which one should we take? Well, we'll take this one to the right. So we took that one, and we drove for a couple hours. <clears throat> it was a good paved road. And we came to a uh, Korean Army checkpoint. There was an MP there, Korean MP. And he stopped us and said, where are you going? Oh, we're going to Seoul. He kind of smiled and chuckled and he says, no, the next stop will be in North Korea. I don't think you want to go there. <laughs> so we had to turn around, go back the two hours that we had just driven back to the little village where we were and take the other road. And uh, needless to say, we didn't get to Seoul until about three o'clock the next morning because we'd wasted two hours going and two hours coming. We wasted four hours. 
where if we'd have waited another 10 minutes and been kind to this GI, he knew the road and we would have gotten home in good time. So the moral of that story was to me, be kind to strangers, it pays. And uh, so we, we learned to, you, you have to pay attention to what people tell you and be kind to people.